नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद जय जय श्री चैतन्य जय नित्यानंद जय द्वैत चंद्र जय गौर भक्त वृंद रीडिंग फ्रॉम श्री चैतन्य चरितामृत आदि लीला चैप्टर थ्री टेक्स्ट नंबर इलेवन दास्य साख्य वात्सल्य श्रृंगार चारी रस चारी भावेर भक्त यता कृष्ण तार वश दास्य साख्य वात्सल्य श्रृंगार चारी रस चारी भावेर भक्त यता कृष्ण तार वश दास्य साख्य वात्सल्य श्रृंगार चारी रस चारी भावेर भक्त यता कृष्ण तार वश चारी भावेर भक्त यता कृष्ण तार वश दास्य सर्विट्यूड साख्य फ्रेंडशिप वात्सल्य पेरेंटल अफेक्शन श्रृंगार कॉन्जिगल लव चारी फोर रस मेलोस चारी फोर भावेर ऑफ द सेंटिमेंट्स भक्ता डिवोटिस यथा एज मेनी एज दे आर कृष्णा लॉर्ड कृष्णा तारा बाय देम वशा सबड्यूड Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupad. Servitude, Dasya, Friendship, Sakya, Parental Affection, Vatsalya and Conjugal Love, Shringara are the four transcendental mellows, Rasas. But the devotees who cherish these four mellows, Lord Krishna is subdued. Purport. Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya and Shringara are the transcendental modes of loving service to the Lord. Shantarasa or the neutral stage is not mentioned in this verse because although in Shantarasa one considers the absolute truth, the sublime great, one does not go beyond that conception. Shantarasa is a very grand idea for materialistic philosophers, but such idealistic appreciation is only the beginning. It is the lowest amongst the relationships in the spiritual world. Shantarasa is not given much importance because as soon as there is a slight understanding between the knower and the known, active loving transcendental reciprocations are and exchanges begin. Dasarasa is the basic relationship 
between Krishna and his devotees. Therefore, this verse considers Dasya the first stage of transcendental devotional service. Om Ajnanati Mirandhasya Gnananjana Shalakaya Chakshuran Vilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam Sthapitam Yena Bhutali Swayam Rupa Hakadamahiyam Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Guru Nvaishnavamscha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakhan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bandho Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostuti Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Haripriye Vancha Kalpata Rubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhya Evacha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutali Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Itinamini Namaste Saraswati Devi Gauravani Pracharini Nirvisesha Sunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarini Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabho Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा I offer my humble obeisances unto all the devotees who assembled for today's Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita session. Today we are discussing from the third chapter of Adilila. This chapter describes the external reasons for Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's descent. The external reasons for the Lord's descent are to spread the process of the chanting of the holy names of Krishna. Krishna Nama Sankirtana he wanted to spread. He also wanted to bestow Varja Bhakti. Krishna Prem to everyone. But there are more private, confidential and internal reasons for his appearance. They will be discussed in the next chapter. And those reasons were centered on his experience of uh, Srimati Radharani's mood in separation from Krishna. Internal reasons and external reasons. <laughs> and in this particular shloka, which is very much in the beginning of the chapter. Krishna Das Kavras Goswami describes that a devotee can connect with the Supreme Lord in one of the four mellows or rasas. What are they? Dasya, Sakya, Vatsalya, Shringara, Chari Rasa. Dasya, the emotion of being a servant of Krishna. Serving Krishna in the mood of a servant. But service to Krishna can be done in other moods also. But here, the mood is that I am a servant and Krishna is the master. Krishna is my master, let me serve him. That is Dasya Rasa. Next is Sakya Rasa. In Sakya Rasa also there is service. But a Sakya Bhakta considers oneself a friend of Krishna and Krishna friend of oneself. He is my friend. So that is considered little higher. Considering the Lord as your dear friend, not only a master. And the next rasa is Vatsalya rasa, where a devotee considers the Lord as a dependent child. Devotee considers oneself superior to the Lord. Superior means, I am a parent, I am a mother, I am a mother, I am a father. So my job is to protect this child. 
uh, serve this child in the mode of being a parent when the child is doing some mischief i need to pull the ear of the child and, and discipline the child <laughs> just like yashoda mata is running behind krishna in that small picture <laughs> so yashoda mata takes a stick and she runs behind krishna and when krishna eats dirt yashoda becomes very anxious she says open your mouth krishna opens his mouth <laughs> out of fear of mother yashoda yashoda mata says you are doing so much mischief i'll tie you are uh, ishada mata says that because you are doing so much mischief i will bind you to this wooden grinding mortar no toys for you no playmates for you no milk products for you no independence for you the supremely independent lord sarva swatantra swami of the entire creation he is being bound by a rope of madhuri shodas love that is vatsalya rasa similarly there are other devotees also in vatsalya bhav then next is shringara rasa shringara is madhurya in another way so it's the it's the mood of considering the lord as lover it's even more intimate than vatsalya rasa there is more freedom of, of expression so these are the four rasas of course there is a fifth rasa which is lesser than all these four rasas that is shanta rasa why that shanta rasa is not a preference of devotees is explained by prabhupada in the purport we just read it self explanatory so in shanta rasa there is an understanding of the divinity of the supreme lord's position but there is no active engagement in service uh, there is a preliminary stage of love of godhead but unless one starts actively rendering service uh, one actually does not experience the pleasure of krishna prema so therefore in this shloka krishna das kavras goswami began with dasya rasa let's begin with dasya rasa shanta rasa is not the preference of many aspiring devotees now let's discuss about these rasas one by one that's what the shloka is <laughs> dasya rasa dasya rasa means to consider oneself as a humble menial eternal servant of krishna and to be a servant of krishna is the swarupa of all living beings uh, it's a swarupa it's the natural constitutional position of all living beings to consider oneself as a servant of krishna and to act as a servant of krishna even the devotees who are in the other rasas like vatsalya sakhya and madhurya they are also servants of krishna only by the way even they are servants of krishna but their service is flavored by a particular mood so particular bhava as a friend sakhya bhava or as a parent vatsalya bhav or as a lover madhurya bhav or shringara bhav but essentially servitude the feeling of being a servant of krishna is common amongst all the rasas and in fact that feeling that emotion of being a servant of krishna is the top most emotion that anyone can ever aspire for even krishna aspires for that position krishna dasa abhimaneye anand sindhu koti brahma sukhana he tara ek bindu the conception of being a servant of krishna the emotion of being a servant of krishna throws a devotee into a pool of ecstasy an ocean of ecstasy you take one drop of that ocean of ecstasy of being a servant of krishna and compare it with brahmananda the happiness of merging into impersonal brahman brahma jyoti of krishna that is also there is some ananda brahmananda is there but that ocean of brahmananda is insignificant in comparison to a drop of bhakti ananda drop of ananda that a das of krishna experiences koti brahma sukha nahe tara ek bindu that's the glory of krishna dasa abhimana even great avatars of krishna krishna has unlimited avatars as krishna said in bhagavad gita uh, sambhavam yuge yuge i appear in every yuga in some form or the other to protect devotees to punish miscreants and to establish dharma i appear in multiple forms in different different yugas different millenniums hmm? so all the krishna is the origin of several such avatars even the avatars also are in the mood of being a servant of krishna 
the expansions of krishna like balaram ji the primeval expansion of krishna the first expansion of krishna he is also in the mode of a servant of krishna balaram ji render service to krishna although he is an elder brother in that sense he also has vatsalya affection towards krishna vatsalya bhav is there in balram and as a gopa boy who accompanies krishna in tending cows in the forest who regularly goes with krishna into the forest he also has sakya bhav definitely although balram ji has sakya bhav and vatsalya bhav still he has uh, this dasya bhav also Uh, he has the emotion of being a servant of krishna whenever krishna becomes little tired while krishna never gets t- tired but as a part of this past time <laughs> while wandering in the forests barefoot along with the cows and the calves krishna sometimes apparently becomes little tired then he sleeps under a tree keeping his head in the lap of a gopa then balram ji comes and massages krishna's feet <laughs> and some other gopas will take some tree branches and start fanning <laughs> fanning krishna you see in this way all the devotees belong to different rasas like sakhya rasa or vatsalya rasa or madhurya rasa they want to serve krishna in that rasa so dasya emotion is common amongst all the rasas dasya emotion is very common advaita acharya who is avatara tattva you know pancha tattvatmakam krishnam bhakta rupa swarupakam bhakta avataram bhakta khyam namami bhakta shaktikam krishna manifests in five tattvas pancha tattva pancha tattvatmakam krishnam first tattva is bhakta rupa tattva the form of a devotee that is lord chaitanya mahaprabhu himself mahaprabhu is krishna but he is acting like a devotee therefore he is bhakta rupa tattva భక్త రూప స్వరూపకం హిజ్ ఓన్ పర్సనల్ ఎక్స్పాన్షన్ స్వరూప హిజ్ ఓన్ పర్సనల్ ఇమీడియట్ ఎక్స్పాన్షన్ దట్ ఈస్ బలరామ్ జీ హూ మేనిఫెస్ట్ హెస్ నిత్యానంద ప్రభు హీస్ ద స్వరూప తత్వ భక్త రూప స్వరూపకం థర్డ్ ఈజ్ భక్త అవతారం ద ఇన్కార్నేషన్ తత్వ సో అవతార తత్వ దట్ ఈస్ అద్వైతాచార్య అద్వైతాచార్య ఈజ్ ఎ కంబైన్డ్ ఇన్కార్నేషన్ ఆఫ్ లార్డ్ శివ అండ్ లార్డ్ విష్ణు సో swarupa tattva also thinks of oneself as das of krishna means nityananda prabhu thinks himself as a servant of krishna bhakta roopa tattva la chaitanya la chaitanya also thinks of himself as a servant of krishna avatara tattva who is that advaita acharya he also thinks of himself as a servant of krishna bhakta roopa tattva swarupa tattva avatara tattva all three are thinking themselves as servants of krishna dasa bhav is there what about the other two bhakta avataram bhakta akhyam namami bhakta shaktikam bhakta akhyam means one who is known as a devotee that is srivast thakur naturally he thinks of himself as a servant of krishna namami bhakta shaktikam who is the bhakta shakti the energy of devotion gadadhar pandit even he also thinks of himself as servant of krishna <laughs> you see all this pancha tattvas shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadhara shrivasa all five of them although they are krishna's expansions krishna appears in these five features they are all different manifestations of krishna in different moods but what is common amongst all of them all of them consider themselves as servants of krishna thus dasa bhava is a constant and common emotion amongst all categories of servants of krishna right from a neophyte bhakta up to the true supreme devotee of shri mat devotee of krishna that is shrimati radharani everybody has this mood of being a servant of krishna okay so this dasa bhava is very very prominent and all of us are here to develop that dasa bhava to come to our original constitutional position as a servant of krishna even krishna aspires to be a servant of krishna yesterday we were discussing vatapatra shai even krishna also likes to embrace this emotion of being a servant of krishna rather than being krishna that's the secret confidential message uh, reason for lord chaitanya's appearance shrimati radharani is rendering service to krishna in shringara rasa in madhurya rasa but
Shrimati Radharani is rendering so much of intimate service to Krishna in the spiritual world. However, Shrimati Radharani experiences 10 million times more happiness than even Krishna who receives her service. Here is Radharani rendering service to Krishna. Both are experiencing happiness, but Krishna's happiness is not as much as Radharani's happiness. Because the happiness of being a servant of Krishna is more than <laughs> you know, happiness of being the supreme absolute truth. Therefore, Krishna aspires to embrace the emotions of Srimati Radharani. Radha Bhavadyuti Subalitam Naomi Krishna Swarupam. He embraced the mood of Srimati Radharani. He accepted the complexion of Srimati Radharani. Taking her complexion and emotion with him, he appeared as golden Gauranga, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Why? He wants to taste the emotion of being a servant of Krishna. And the topmost of all the servants of Krishna is Srimati Radharani. And he wanted to taste that emotion, her emotion. Therefore, he appeared as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Jai Sri Sri Radha Ras Bihari Bhagavan Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. That's about Dasya Rasa. In the Chaitanya Jaritamrita, there are beautiful descriptions about all these rasas in different chapters. Prominently, in the 8th chapter of the Madhya Leela, there was a beautiful conversation that happened between Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his dear devotee Ramananda Rai on the bank of Godavari when Mahaprabhu was in his South India tour. There, Mahaprabhu was asking several questions to Ramananda Rai. First he asked, what is the highest attainable goal of a human being? What's the greatest sadhya? Sadhya means attainable goal. Then Ramanandra said, follow Varnashram system. <laughs> then Mahaprabhu said, Eho Bahya, tell me something better. So like that, Lord uh, Ramanandra was giving so many such proposals. This is better, that is better. Mahaprabhu uh, rejected initial proposals, then accepted few later proposals. And finally, when he came to Prema Bhakti, Mahaprabhu said, yes, this is wonderful. This is amazing. But Prema Bhakti is fine. But Prema Bhakti is experienced and expressed in multiple flavors. I want those flavors. I want you to go a little deeper into this Prema Bhakti. Then Ramanandra spoke about Dasya Prema. Then Mahaprabhu said, this is very good, amazing. <laughs> go ahead. Then he said, Sakya Prema is higher than Dasya Prima. That's wonderful. But there's something more. Say that. Then Ramananda said, Vatsalya Prima is superior to even Sakya Prima. Mahaprabhu said, Wonderful, Yeho Uttam. Please say something more. <laughs> then Ramananda said, Kanta Prima or Shringara Rasa or Madhuri Rasa is superior to even Vatsalya Bhav also. Then Mahaprabhu says, Say something more. There's nothing more. <laughs> so we have come to uh, the limit, Sadhyavati, the highest attainable goal of Madhurya Prema or Srangara Rasa. Then Mahaprabhu said, no, go deep into it. Then Ramanandari goes deeper. He says that the Srangara Rasa or Madhurya Prema is experienced in two flavors, Parakiya Rasa and Swakiya Rasa. Swakiya Rasa is wedded love, means the love that a wife has for her husband. And Parakiya Rasa means the love that a lover has for her beloved. This Swakiya Rasa is seen in Dwaraka and Parakiya Rasa is seen in Vrindavan, between Krishna and the gopis of Vrindavan. And amongst all the gopis of Vrindavan, Srimati Radharani is the supreme. Then Mahaprabhu said, yes, now we have reached the summit. <laughs> right? So like that, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita Madhya Leela, the conversation between Ramanandra and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu reveals the glories of these four Rasas even more. I just summarized in three, four minutes. But there are many more details. I'll, I'll give the details. But let me first uh, recollect other sections where these rasas are described. Another prominent episode in Chaitanya Charitamrita is the 19th chapter of Madhya Leela, where Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was giving his instructions to Rupa Goswami. There he describes the signs of devotional service very elaborately and he speaks about these five rasas also, very elaborately. Then even in his Sanatana Siksha also, which begins from 20th chapter of Madhya Leela and goes all the way to 24th chapter, again he speaks about the Abhideya and he speaks about uh, this Rasas briefly. Like the Chaitanya Charitamrita is filled with 
the descriptions of this rasas now let's go again deeper begin with dasya rasa ramanandare explains the glory of dasya rasa with this beautiful shloka he quotes this shloka ಭವಂತಮೇವಾನುಚರ ನಿರಂತರ ಪ್ರಶಾಂತ ನಿಶೇಷ ಮನೋರಥಾಂತರ ಕದಾಹ ಮೈಕಾಂತಿಕ ನಿತ್ಯ ಕಿಂಕರ ಪ್ರಹರ್ಷಯಿಷ್ಯಾಮಿ ಸನಾಥ ಜೀವಿತ ಭವಂತಮೇವಾನುಚರ ನಿರಂತರ ಎ ದಾಸ್ಯ ಭಕ್ತ ಎ ಡಿವೋಟಿ ಹು ವಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಎಂಬ್ರೇಸ್ ದ ಎಮೋಷನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹೀಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಲಾಂಗಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಎ ಕಂಪ್ಯಾನಿಯನ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಭವಂತಮೇವ ಅನುಚರ ನಿರಂತರ ಓ ಲಾ ನಿರಂತರ ಆಲ್ವೇಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಬಿ ಯುವರ್ ಅನುಚರ ಅನುಚರ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಹೂ ಸಿನ್ಸಿಯರ್ಲಿ ಫಾಲೋಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಮೂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಎ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಯುವರ್ ಅನುಚರ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಯುವರ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಟ್ ನಾಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಲೈಕ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಆರ್ ಲವರ್ ಬಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಫಾಲೋವರ್ ರೆಂಡರಿಂಗ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸಸ್ ಟು ಯುವರ್ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಭವಂತಮೇವ ಅನುಚರ ನಿರಂತರ ಪ್ರಶಾಂತ ನಿಶೇಷ ಮನೋರಥಾಂತರ ಪ್ರಶಾಂತ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಬಿ ಪೀಸ್ಫುಲ್ ಕಾಮ್ composed sober not so distracted and and hyper when kalakrishna das was accompanying lord chaitanya mahaprabhu in his south india yatra when they reached this tamil nadu somewhere kalakrishna das was distracted by bhattatharis he was allured by some gypsy ladies they just kidnapped him and then took him to their camp then lord chaitanya mahaprabhu had to personally go to their camp and pull kalakrishna das by the by his shikha and rescue him <laughs> reclaim him uh, so kalakrishna das just got distracted like this but lord chaitanya mahaprabhu allowed kalakrishna das to continue to serve him till when till he reached jagannath puri back <laughs> this incident happened somewhere in the middle of the yatra Hare Krishna Dandani seeking your blessings devikinandan I feel very awkward and embarrassed to speak in front of so many exalted vaishnavas here brij hari prabhu devikinandan prabhu maharaj but i am i'll continue to do my seva with their blessings hare krishna so kala krishna das was rescued by lord chaitanya mahaprabhu and he continues to serve lord chaitanya mahaprabhu till he reached jagannath puri but when lord chaitanya mahaprabhu reached jagannath puri kala krishna das uh, was repentant for his mistake but mahaprabhu said i am not responsible for this person anymore i am not responsible for him let him do whatever he wants but nityananda jagadananda damodara mukunda these four devotees especially nityananda prabhu who is the one who recommended the name of kala krishna das and and allowed him to accompany lord chaitanya mahaprabhu in his tour he uh, found out some service for kala krishna das he said oh lord now that you have come back from your south india yatra back to jagannath puri some devotee has to go and inform this news to the devotee set navadweep shantipur so we are sending him are you okay with it do whatever you want <laughs> mahaprabhu said so that devotee who is rejected by lord chaitanya mahaprabhu apparently <laughs> is given some service some engagement some blessing by nityananda prabhu jagadananda damodara mukunda and finally he went to uh, this place shantipur and informed advaita acharya srivas thakur murari gupta haridas thakur sachi mata that mahaprabhu is back from his south india yatra after a couple of years you please uh, uh, you can plan to come there for jagannath rath yatra so he received great blessings from all these great souls now next time lord chaitanya mahaprabhu planned to go to vrindavan yatra there again our devotees are suggesting that please take somebody with you please take somebody with you then lord chaitanya mahaprabhu recollected this incident this kala krishna das came with me as my servant but his mind is not in his control his his intelligence and his senses were not in his control he went to bhattatharis he was allured by them i had to come and rescue him so i want somebody who is prashanta 
who is peaceful calm composed whose senses and mind are in control so this is the requirement of a dasa das means servant bhavanta mevanu charan nirantara prashanta nishesha manorathantara bhavanta eva anucharan nirantara kalakrishnadas got the opportunity to be anuchara <laughs> to follow lord chaitanya mahaprabhu to serve him but that prashanta is missing there but not only accompanying the master in the mode of a servant but mind has to be peaceful and composed and calm also prashanta not agitated not udvegakaram <laughs> but prashanta mahaprabhu said i want someone whose mind is little peaceful not turbulent not distracted not agitated not hyper but sober <laughs> prashanta not only that nihishesha manorathantara nihishesha sasesha means some remainder is there nishesha means no nothing else is remaining nishesha manorathantara manoratha means desires so this person should not have any material desires prashanta nishesha manorathantara kadaha maikantika nitya kinkara so a devotee a servant devotee should follow the footsteps of the master to fo- follow the instructions of the master then should be very peaceful calm sober composed gentle grave not only that no material desires no distractions mind is not disturbed by many other material thoughts nishesha manorathantara kadaha maikantika nitya kinkara should always aspire for becoming a dedicated unalloyed one pointed servant of the lord nitya kinkara let me always serve him aikantika nitya kinkara aikantiki bhakti praharshayishyami sanatha jeevitam then i'll be very happy considering my lord as my natha sanatha <laughs> this is my jeevitam <laughs> so this is the glory of uh, dasya bhakti then the second which is described in this shloka is sakya bhakti sakya bhakti means there is a feeling of fraternity considering the lord as one's dear friend considering oneself as the lord's dear friend considering the lord as one's equal we can see that in in uh, uh, gopas in vrindavan so while dasya bhakti is predominated by feeling of being a servant of krishna this sakya bhakti is predominated by vishrambha intimacy fraternity vishrambha pradhana sakya bhakti in this also there are two flavors there is kevala sakya bhakti and there is aishwarya gnana yukta sakya bhakti means the sakya bhakta understands the opulences of krishna like arjun bhima they are the sakya bhaktas in hastinapur dwarka uh, they are also understanding krishna's divine position as the supreme personality of godhead but they also have friendly feelings towards krishna but the gopas of vrindavan they are different they don't understand krishna as the supreme personality of godhead even though the lord exhibits his godhood so vividly the lord exhibits his godhood he says that all the all the gopas take shelter of krishna krishna our dear friend this forest fire is spreading in all directions you please protect me from this forest fire protect us from this forest fire krishna says close your eyes all the gopas close their eyes krishna swallows the forest fire then he says open your eyes they opened forest fire is not there <laughs> so all the gopas for a moment they got stunned my god krishna is so powerful looks like he is a devata he is a god <laughs> he is a devata he has so many powers he just swallowed forest fire so effortlessly then the next thought in the gopas is if krishna is a devata we are also devatas <laughs> because we are his friends <laughs> so like that all the gopas were enjoying with uh, krishna sometimes krishna balaram they all uh, play they make themselves into teams many years back in kanpur i heard this past time from his grace devaki nandan prabhu in kanpur uh, he was describing the past time of pralambasur how balram ji and krishna made themselves into two teams with their associates and they had some game and in that game balram ji's team won and krishna's team lost 
and some of the members of balram ji's team had to climb on the backs of krishna's team and krishna's team has to carry them <laughs> so sometimes sakya bhaktas can even climb on the backs of krishna they may give their lap to krishna to lie on they may give their back to krishna <laughs> they may take the back of krishna to sit on <laughs> that is the glory of sakya bhaktas krishna our uh, Sukadeva Goswami describes this Sakya Bhakti in a beautiful shloka, especially in the 12th chapter of the 10th canto of Srimad Bhagavatam. Ittham satam brahma sukha anubhutya dasyam gatanam paradaivatena maya shritanam naradara kena shakam vijahruha krta punya punja Ittham satam brahma sukha anubhutya There are some great personalities that they experience brahma sukha brahma sukha anubhutya there are other devotees sakhyam gatanam paradaivatena dasyam gatanam paradaivatena in the mood of a servant they consider the supreme lord as their paradevata the supremely worshipable deity and they worship him they serve him that is another category first those who want to enter brahman second they want to serve the lord as a servant but here there are other people maya shritanam naradarakena Maya Shrita means people who have taken shelter of Maya, materialistic people. When they see Krishna, you know what they think? Narada Arakeda. Krishna is just like any, like any other ordinary child in our neighbor household. He is also stealing butter. He is also doing a lot of mischief. He is being scolded and chastised by his mother. Narada Arakeda, ordinary child. But the... the Sakya Bhaktas are special. Maya Shritanam Naradara Kena Shakam Vijahruha Krita Punya Punja But all the Gopas of Vrindavan, they are so fortunate, they are so exalted that they are getting an opportunity to play with Krishna. The first category people, those who want to attain Brahman, they don't play with Krishna. Second category, those who worship the Lord as Paradaivata, they don't play. Maya Shritanam, no possibility to play only. Even though they consider Krishna as ordinary child, but these gopas, they play with Krishna on an equal level. They climb on the back of Krishna. When Krishna is imitating some peacocks and dancing like peacocks, and he would say that, oh, these peacocks don't know how to dance. See, I'm dancing better than them. And all the other gopas would surround Krishna and then they clap. Wow, wow, amazing. Krishna, you're dancing so nicely <laughs> like peacock. They praise Krishna, but they consider Krishna as their equal also. Now, in the 10th canto, 21st chapter, Sukadeva Goswami speaks a beautiful shloka. How Krishna is accompanied by all these beautiful gopas and cows and enters into the forest of Vrindavan. Barha pidam natavarava puhu karna yor karni karam Bibhradva sahakanaka kapisham vaijayantim chamalam Randhran Veno Radhara Sudhaya Purayan Gopa Vrindair Vrindaranyam Svapada Ramanam Pravishad Gita Kirti Barha Pidam Natavarava Puhu Krishna wears a beautiful resplendent peacock feather which is like a rainbow on his head Natavarava Puhu Krishna has this beautiful form like a drama artist <laughs> Bluish body Lotus like eyes Yellow cloth Yellow dress Vajayanti Mala in his neck and uh, nice hair dressing and maybe small turban and peacock feather on head. He looks like a drama artist. Natavara Vapuhu Karna Yor Karnikaram. He wears a Karnika flower sometimes to the right ear, sometimes to the left ear. Bibhradva Sahakanaka Kapisham. Bibhradva Saha means Krishna wears a resplendent cloth, yellow dhoti. Kanaka Kapisham, it has golden hue. Vaijayanti Imcha Mahalam. He wears a Vaijayanti Mala, which is made of multiple types of fragrant forest flowers. Randhran Veno Radhara Sudhaya Purayan Gopa Vrindair. While entering the forest of Vrindavan, he would, uh, he would fill the nectar of his lips into the holes of this flute. Something that has holes cannot hold anything. But Krishna's flute that has holes all over its body holds millions of ragas. Although Krishna's flute is dry, 
Krishna's flute can moisten the eyes of all those who hear Krishna's flute song. Randhran veno radhara sudhaya purayan gopa vrindair. Gopa vrindair. While playing his flute, Krishna would enter the forest of Vrindavan along with gopa vrindair. All the gopa boys. And all these gopa boys are glorifying Krishna. Gita Kirti, they are glorifying Krishna. While they are glorifying Krishna, Krishna is playing his flute. Very perfectly blending his flute song into the natural sounds of Vrindavan. What are the natural sounds of Vrindavan? The waterfalls, the birds chirping and the breeze moving the trees and making some pleasant sound. And all these natural sounds and Krishna's flute song, just, they just blend such a wonderful ambience of Vrindavan. In that ambience, the gopas are very beautifully glorifying Krishna. Krishna is accompanied by all these gopas throughout the day. He would play. They would imitate frogs. They would imitate monkeys. They would imitate flying birds. They would just look down into the wells and then and then shout. And when the resound comes, they enjoy, they laugh. <laughs> so this is how the gopas are uh, happily enjoying with Krishna. They are on different plane. And there is Aishwarya Jnana Yukta Sakharasa, where our Arjuna, sometimes he worships the Supreme Lord Krishna as Supreme Lord. Sometimes he considers him as my my friend. Huh? Hey Govinda, hey Yadava, hey Sakheti. <laughs> like that. He, he addresses him very uh, normally, like a friend. So next rasa described in this shloka is Vatsalya rasa. Vatsalya rasa is the feeling of um, a parent of Krishna, mother of Krishna. Chaitanya Chiritamrit, Ramananda Rai quotes this shloka. Nemam virincho nabhavo nashrir apyanga samshrayat prasadam lebhire gopi yattat prapavi mukti dat. The position of a Vatsalya bhakta or mother or father of Krishna is higher than the position of the Sakya bhaktas. <laughs> Sometimes Mother Yashoda can chastise these boys also. <laughs> Uh, she can chastise Madhumangal also, Krishna's friend. But Madhumangal cannot chastise Mother Yashoda. <laughs> so there is uh, in hierarchy. Although in an, by doing an unbiased comparison, you will find a hierarchy in all these rasas. Every devotee who loves Krishna in a particular rasa considers himself very satisfied and happy in that particular relationship with Krishna. There may be five floors in a building. Fifth floor is definitely the highest floor. But one who is living in the third floor is happy. <laughs> he is happy. Not that one day Sakya Bhakta will become Vatsalya Bhakta or Madhurya Bhakta. Not necessary. That can be their eternal mood also. They want to serve the Lord in that mood also. But if you do a comparison, they are, they are higher. Vatsalya devotees are higher than Sakya devotees. So, Nemam virincho na bhavo na shri rapyanga samshrayat prasadam lebhi regopi yattat prapa vimukti dat. The mercy that Srimati Yashoda Mata got from Krishna is unparalleled. Niyamam Virincho, Brahma did not get this mercy. Na Bhavo, Shiva did not get this mercy. Na Shreer, even Lakshmi Devi, Angasam Sharyat, although she is very close to the Lord, she did not get that mercy. Prasadam le bhire gopi yattat prapa mimukti dat. That is a prasada, special mercy that Srimati Yashoda Mata got from Krishna. She got the privilege of tying Krishna. Prabhupada writes in one purport of Damodar Lila only. Although for argument's sake, people may uh, think that they have become one with the Lord. Let's accept for an argument. For an argument's sake, let's accept that they have become one with the Lord. But a devotee becomes greater than God. Like Yashoda Mata. <laughs> so Yashoda Mata tied the belly of Krishna with the rope of her love. Just some time back, you see this picture, last picture is Yashoda Mata chasing Krishna and trying to tie Krishna. Just two pictures back, Yashoda Mata just saw the entire universe within the belly of Krishna. Entire universe is there within the belly of Krishna and Yashoda Mata tied that belly of Krishna. Means she brought not only Krishna, entire universe under her control. <laughs> right? Entire universe came under her control. So, devotee can become greater than God. Not every devotee. Vatsalya Bhakta, that kind of devotee. <laughs> so, Ekala Ishwara Krishna Arasabha Bhritya. Everybody is a servant of Krishna. 
uh, every Krishna is the only master, but everyone else is servant. And Krishna is controlled by that servant. Bhritya Vashyata. He has this quality of Bhritya Vatsalyata. Means he is controlled by his Bhritya. Evam Sandarshita Hyanga Harina Bhritya Vashyata Svavashena Pi Krishnena Yasyedam Seshwaram Vashe. Sukadeva Goswami says, Evam Sandarshita Hyanga. Harina Bhritya Vashyata. The Lord wanted to demonstrate this quality. What is that quality? Bhritya Vashyata. I am controlled by my devotees. The Lord wanted to, uh, wanted to uh, announce that I have this quality. So, he demonstrated this Damodar Leela. But although the Lord is Hari, is Bhritya Vashyata, he is controlled by the affection of his devotees, not every Bhritya can control him. Technically, everybody is a Bhritya. Ekale, Ishwara, Krishna, Arasabha Bhritya. That means, Krishna is controlled by every Bhritya? No. That Bhritya, who is in the mood of being a Bhritya, who has intense love for Krishna, such Bhrityas can control Krishna. Technically, everybody is Bhritya, but in the conditioned state, the Bhritya is not having the conception of being a Bhritya, servant. But the conditioned soul is having the conception of being a master, controller, enjoyer, proprietor, etc. Therefore, such Bhrityas cannot control Krishna. That's what the shloka says here. Chari bhavera bhakta yata krishna tara vasha. Vasha means to be controlled. Bhakta vasyata. Krishna is controlled by a devotee who is in one of these four rasas. One of these four emotions. So, example is very vividly seen in Ishodamata's Damodar Leela where she tied Krishna, bound Krishna. No more playmates for you. No more toys for you. No more milk products for you. No more movement for you. Just stay here. Till my anger calms down. <laughs> so, Yashoda Mata is a Vatsalya Bhakta. And amongst many other Vatsalya Bhaktas, her position is topmost. In the prayers of Queen Kunti, Kunti Mata says, Krishna Yavasu Devaya Devaki Nandanaya Cha Nanda Gopakumaraya Govindaya Namo Namaha She says, Krishna Yavasu Devaya. Krishna, you are the son of Vasudev, one Vatsalya Bhakta. Devaki Nandanaya Cha you are son of another Vatsalya Bhakta, that is Devaki Mata. Vasudeva and Devaki, they have given birth to Krishna. Then, Nanda Gopakumaraya, you are also the son of Nanda Maharaj. Govindaya Namo Namaha. In one shloka, she, she uh, remembered the names of three Vatsalya Bhaktas. Nanda Maharaj, Vasudeva and Devaki. But she did not mention the name of Yashoda Mata. She thought that, let me give a separate, exclusive shloka for Yashoda Mata. After a couple of prayers, she says, Gopya dade tvai krita gasida matavad Yate da shastru kalilan jana sambhrama aksham Vaktram niniya bhaya bhavanaya sthitasya Samam vimohayati bhira piyad bibheti She gives one long shloka exclusively glorifying Yashoda Mata. <laughs> She says, Gopya dade tvai kritagasi damatava, that gopi, Srimati Yashoda Mata. Tvai kritagasi, agasi means offenses. Krita agasi means Krishna, you have committed so many offenses. What are the offenses committed by Krishna? He broke the butter pot, he escaped, he stole butter, he distributed butter to monkeys, he ran in the streets of Vrindavan and allowed Yashoda Mata to run behind him, <laughs> not, uh, not being caught. And finally, when Mother Yashoda caught him, he started speaking so many lies in front of Mother Yashoda. Like that, so many such offenses Krishna has committed. <laughs> Dhamma Tavad, because Krishna committed so many mistakes, Yashoda Mata wanted to bind Krishna. Gopya dade toyi krita gasida matavad yate dashashru kalilanjana sambhramaksham. Kalilanjana sambhramaksham. Seeing that <laughs> beautiful. Uh, form of Krishna, which has tears in his eyes. Uh, our, our Kunti Mata is imagining that form of Krishna. When Yashoda Mata is trying to punish you, scold you, Sambhramaksham, your eyes were filled with terror. And you are trying to wipe your tears. Whenever Krishna becomes uh, sad or he cries, Yashoda Mata takes her cloth and wipes the tears of Krishna. Oh, don't cry, don't cry. <laughs> but this time Yashoda Mata becomes so strict that she is not wiping the tears of Krishna. 
Krishna had to wipe his own tears with his own hands. <laughs> Uh, Karakamala with his two hands. Uh, now, some Brahmaksham is eyes were filled with terror. Vaktram niniya bhaya bhavanaya sthitasya. Vaktram niniya means Krishna has bent his head low. Niniya bhaya bhavanaya with his fear in his eyes, he is standing there. Sthitasya. Who would bend his head low? A criminal. In the court, in front of judge. In this court of Rindavan, Yashoda Mata is the judge, jury panel. <laughs> Krishna is the criminal and Krishna's future is there in Ishadamata's hands. Vaktram niniya bhaya bhavanaya sthitasya samam vimohayati bhirapi yad bibheti. Even fear personified becomes fearful of, uh, of uh, Krishna, but that Krishna is fearful of little stick in the hand of Mother Yashoda. That is the glory of Vatsalya Bhakti, unlimited affection towards Krishna. When Uddhava was sent as a messenger by Krishna to Vrindavan to console his parents, Nanda Maharaj and Yashoda Mata, then Uddhava got this opportunity to see the highest epitome of parental affection towards the Lord. Yashoda Mata was unable to speak a single word. She only had tears in her eyes. We can read 10th Canto, 46th chapter. Then uh, Nanda Maharaj started speaking. He was missing Krishna. He was recollecting all the pastimes that Krishna did in Vrindavan. And he says that, um, Uddhava, does Krishna ever remember us? Uddhava, will Krishna ever come back to uh, Vrindavan? Does he remember his cows, beloved cows? He has destroyed so many demons here and protected us in so many ways, just as Gargamani predicted. Now we are missing him so much. Like that he expresses so much of his Vatsalya Bhava in front of Uddhava, whole night passes like that. So this is the glory of Vatsalya. Then final is Shringara Rasa. So it's a very exalted emotion per, towards the Supreme Lord. And the gopis are the epitome of the Shringara Rasa. This Madhurya Bhav is experienced or expressed in two flavors, Svakiya and Parakiya. Svakiya is the wedded love and Parakiya is the unwedded love. Here is Gopis, here are the queens of Vrindavan. But if you see, as I said in the beginning, 15-20 minutes, this emotion of being a servant of Krishna is common amongst the devotees of all rasas. There was a great meeting, Prabhupada writes in Krishna book, there was a great meeting between Draupadi Mata and all the queens of Krishna at Kurukshetra, 10th canto, you can see 82-83 chapters. In that meeting, our Draupadi asked the queens of Krishna, how did you get married to Krishna? May I know your marriage story? Then Rukmini Mata, Rukmini Devi spoke her story, how Krishna uh, kidnapped her, how she wrote a love letter to Krishna and then Brahmana took that letter to Krishna and read and Krishna came and kidnapped Rukmini. Then Satyabhama spoke her story. Then uh, Jambavati spoke her story. But all these queens who were narrating their wonderful stories of their getting married to Krishna, at the end of their narration, they said that, I just want to be a humble, menial maid servant of Krishna in his palace. I want to just render service to his lotus feet. All of them, although they are queens of Krishna, they are intimately connected to Krishna, they are very much looking forward to serve the lotus feet of Krishna like a maid servant. So the emotion of being a servant is present in all the devotees of all rasas, even uh, Sringara rasa. Then, coming to the gopis of Vrindavan. The gopis of Vrindavan also wanted to render service to Krishna. When Krishna is just going away from Vrindavan, apparently, when Akrura comes to take Krishna away, then all the gopis were feeling intense separation from Krishna. They were expecting that some elder would intervene and stop Akrura's chariot, but nobody did it. Then the gopis themselves came out, blocked the path of Akrura. Some gopis were catching the wheels of Akrura's chariot. Some gopis were catching the uh, driver of Akrura's chariot. Some people were even beating Akrura. <laughs> uh, and some people were catching Krishna and, and uh, crying. Some gopis were catching Balaram and they were crying. Krishna said, don't worry, I'll come back very soon. 
if the gopis are confident that the devotees at mathura will be able to render service to krishna perfectly the gopis wouldn't have any problem gopis would allot krishna to go to mathura but the gopis of vrindavan were convinced that krishna gets the best quality service only in vrindavan and through us that makes krishna happy and this happiness krishna would miss in mathura therefore we want we want him to stay back in mathura that is their emotion so the eagerness to render service to krishna is it finds its epitome in the gopis of vrindavan they don't consider any uh, selfish enjoyment for themselves they always want to see krishna happy for giving krishna happiness even for a moment they don't mind undergoing unlimited austerity and pain for the rest of eternity to just to make krishna happy for even for one moment the epitome of that servitude can be seen in the uh, gopis of vrindavan further seeing the wonderful display of their their emotions for krishna their love for krishna even great exalted personalities like uddhava lord sri chaitanya mahaprabhu they also are describing the gopis pastimes with krishna there is no trace of lust there there is complete spiritual love uddhava said asama ho charan renu jushama ham syam vrindavane kimapi gulmala tau latau shadhinam yadustyajam svajana marya patham chahitva bhejur mukinda padavim shruti bhir vimrugyam asama ho charan renu jushama ham syam i want the dust from the lotus feet of all these devotees of vrindavan charan renu Uh, if i ask them directly they will not give they are simple village devotees <laughs> and i am coming from dwarka city uh, from mathura city a great prince they would feel very humble and simple at heart that they wouldn't offer their dust to me so i have an idea to get their dust what is that idea vrindavane kimapi gulmalata oshadhinam i will become a gulmalata aushadhi a herb or a shrub or a little grass in vrindavan so that i would naturally get the dust from the lotus feet of all these devotees of vrindavan yadus tyajam swajana marya patham chahitva bhejur mukunda padavim shruti bhir vimrugyam they have given up all their family connections and vedic rules and regulations and societal pressures etc just to render service to krishna swajana marya patham chahitva they have given up everything bhejur mukunda padavim shruti bhir vimrugyam that position of being a servant of krishna is being searched after sought of, sought by pursued by even shrutis also but gopi satern uh, effortlessly got it so much so that krishna said that napara ye ham niravadya samyujam i have no ability to repay the debt that i owe you even if you give me one full day of brahma to repay the debt i owe you i won't be able to you be satisfied with your own devotional service now these are very very exalted topics now let's discuss something which is on the sadhaka level if you see the first canto of shrimad bhagavatam one of the first teachings given by suta goswami is this the first chapter is just the questions asked by the sages of namisharanya then suta goswami begins to speak in the second chapter one of the first statements that suta goswami said was ahai tu ki apratihata yayatma suprasidati सवै पुंसा परो धर्मो यतो भक्तिरधोक्षजे अहै तुकी अप्रतिहता ययात्मा सुप्रसीदति सवै पुंसा परो धर्मो द सुप्रीम धर्म ऑफ एवरी लिविंग बीइंग इज यतो भक्तिरधोक्षजे डिवोशनल सर्विस इनटू अधोक्षज कृष्ण एंड दैट डिवोशनल सर्विस मस्ट बी परफॉर्मड अहै तुकी विदाउट एनी मटेरियल मोटिवेशंस विदाउट एनी अल्टीरियर डिजायर्स विदाउट एनी पर्सनल एजेंडास aprathihata without any interruptions or inconsistencies or breaks or irregularities when our service to krishna is unmotivated and uninterrupted selfless and seamless causeless and ceaseless that will lead to ultimate satisfaction of heart yayatma suprasidati atma suprasidati the heart is completely satisfied only by unmotivated and uninterrupted service to krishna coming back to the case of the gopis where krishna told the gopis 
I have no ability to repay you. I feel so bankrupt in offering any uh, any payment or any reciprocation for the selfless service that you have done. May you be satisfied with your own selfless devotional service. Let's connect it to Ahituki Apratihata. When a devotee renders selfless, unmotivated devotional service unto Krishna, that service completely satisfies the heart of a devotee so much so that even Krishna does not have anything else in his stock to offer to that devotee. More than that satisfaction. The satisfaction of selfless devotional service is the ultimate satisfaction available in the entire cosmos and beyond that satisfaction of selfless bhakti, Krishna doesn't have anything else. That's what he told the gopis. <laughs> and we are in the path of cultivating that ahituki bhakti. Even great Atmaramas are also looking forward to render ahituki bhakti unto Krishna. Atmaramascha munayo nirgrantha apyurukrami kurvantya ahituki bhaktim ittham bhuta guno hari. Somebody may be Atmarama. Prabhupada, it's elaborate purport in the first canto, seventh chapter, tenth shloka. Atmarama, multiple definitions. Even Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gives 61 explanations to this one shloka, Atmaram shloka, in the 24th chapter of Madhilila. Atmarama means one who is self-satisfied. He doesn't need anything beyond himself for his satisfaction. He is Atmarama. Muni means very thoughtful sage. Nirgrantha means one who has nothing to do with any grantha. <laughs> means, uh, example is Mrgari. No scripture. They are in their own world. <laughs> so whether somebody is an Atmarama or Muni or Nirgrantha, they are helplessly attracted to Krishna's qualities and they perform Ahaituki Bhakti. Kurvanti Ahaituki Bhaktim Itham Bhuta Guno Hari. They perform Ahaituki Bhakti. That's the sweetness of Ahaituki Bhakti. To conclude our hour long discussion, let us seek the blessings of Srila Prabhupada and Sri Sri Radha Ras Bihari and Gaurnithai for developing that mood of selfless devotional service, imbibing that spirit of Ahaituki Bhakti and render service to Krishna with absolutely no expectation in return. And the shloka describes the four great rasas, Dasya rasa, Sakya rasa, Vatsali rasa, Madhurya rasa. Of all these rasas, the common thing is the emotion of being a servant of Krishna, the eagerness to render service to Krishna in a selfless spirit service without any selfish considerations. That's the aspiration of a devotee and that's the swarupa of a devotee. Jivera swarupa hai krishnera nitya das. To be a servant of Krishna is our uh, real identity. Our real identity is to be a servant of Krishna. Let's imbibe the emotion of being a servant of Krishna by engaging ourselves in various services of Krishna under the guidance of senior servants of Krishna and the blessings of Srila Prabhupada. With this I'll conclude. Ganathara Shrimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Rohini. Thank you very much for nectarian and wonderful class and presentation. Once again, thank you. We left the last three, five o'clock, came here like 8.30. Feeling tired, but your class is so nectarian that I sat down for a whole class. Thank you. Now, this payar does not mention about Santa. It talks only about four rasa. And we know that there are five rasa. Mm. So, Santa that does not mean that Krishna is not captured by the devotee who are in Santa. Santa means Santa, it's silence, always silence. In Braj, all the rasas are prominent. Even Santa rasa is very prominent. As he said in class that the gopis, they wanted to stay there in form of Gulmulata. In fact, they are there till today. After Krishna left the planet, all the Mahishi, they were very desperate to see Krishna. And finally, you know, they came, Narada said, that they came to Braj and they performed 
Kirtan, where Udhava, you know, I mean, they wanted to see Krishna once in their lifetime. And then it was told that you go to Braj. And then Udhava is living in the form of Kulunata. And when you do Kirtan, he will come out and he will speak Bhagavatam. And when he speaks Bhagavatam, Krishna appears from Bhagavatam because you are not different from Bhagavatam. So, the great devotee of Braj, they stay in form of, you know, the Gulmulata, even Narada and Shiva, they desire to take birth in Braj, in different tree. So, all those trees are not ordinary tree. I remember when we were in Vrindavan in 77, I believe, we came from village and we have a habit of doing that one from Nim Twig. So I used to climb up and break the Nim Twig. So one devotee, he told me, I think maybe Achana Swami, somebody told me that all these trees are not ordinary, they are the demigod or they are great devotee, they are taken birth in Braj. So don't do this harming of plugging the name stick for making a twig. So same the cows, they are in Santa. So all those devotees in Santaras, they are also great devotee and Krishna is under their control. He called Govinda, you know, who gives pleasure of the cow and he has a lot of pastime with the cows in Braj, Giraj Govardhan and many other. So Santa is there, not that it's not there. So the devotees should understand that four rasa is there, does not mean Santa is not there, Santa is also there. But just it is hidden, just it is hidden. Other thing in Braj, there is no scope of Aswarya. Krishna has changed away Aswarya. Aswarya only appears in Braj if somebody gets doubt in Madhurya, like Jasoda. She got doubt in the Madhurya that Krishna ate dirt and then she saw whole universe. Brahma got doubt. Is he the same Supreme Personality of Godhead? Brahma got doubt. Is he the same Supreme Personality of Godhead? And as Jaragupati Upadhyaya said, Whom should I go and say that Krishna is hunting the copies on the bank of Jamuna? You know, so nobody will believe. Brahma did not believe. So Aswarya came. So Aswarya is not there at all in Braj, but only Madhurya is there. And in Madhurya, one does not see Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So, Dasya, he can climb on the shoulder because he doesn't see that he is Supreme Personality of Godhead. Sorry, in, uh, in service. And when there is a Madhurya in the service with a servant or a master, then there is no formality left there. Become very close and Prabhupada gave example of that Mr. Mukherjee or Banerjee who had his driver and the driver was best friend of Mr. Mukherjee. He did not even reveal his heart to his wife and children, but he used to reveal his heart to his driver. So a driver is servant, but relationship is such. So in Braj, even Dasya, Madhurya, this is Madhuri Mai Dasya, same way Madhuri Mai Sakya, same way Madhuri Mai Vasalya, and then Madhuri Mai Singar. All are Madhuri Mai in Braj. Thus, they don't see Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whereas Mathura and Dwarika and other places, there is Iswarjmai. That's where they are ready. Yes, my Lord. The service they are doing, but Iswarjmai. Sakya, like Arjuna and other, other, they are also, you know, they are friend, but same time, they have Iswarya. They keep the distance also. Same way Vasalamai. Devaki, 
you know the milk did not come from her breast by seeing krishna but in kupta vrindavan according to the bhagavata amrit when she wanted to see the her six son and when krishna brought those six son then milk started coming because there she did not see aishwarya in those six child but she saw aishwarya in krishna thus milk did not come krishna was the youngest one six were killed before he was the youngest one but he still milk did not come but he also aishwarya mai and singa you know satyabhama rukmini and all these thing they had you know aishwarya so in braj there is only madhurya nothing else therefore the devotee of the lord they like to associate more or being more with the devotee who are of brajabasi or braj nature that's the beauty anyway this is other thing very i mean everything was very nice each shloka can be explained for hours like you say the word prashanta and uh, i think baldev vidya bhushan i exactly remember it in this shloka jitatmana prashantasya paramatma samahita so there it describe prashanta means one who has connection with krishna he prashanta not that people who have control of mind are prashanta there are many yogi they control their mind but they are not prashanta they also bum come here but devotee of the lord who is nothing but only krishna they are prashanta not only they have control their mind they have control their everything so that was the i thought this addition not that what you say is wrong but yes. that ordinary meaning one who is control of mind is the prashanta but well devi devas of one who is connection with krishna is the prashanta so his mind his intelligence is not there no kubudhi and subudhi only subudhi is there राधारानीशोदाचुने directly and visibly she is serving every day bathing clothing decorating and feeding and massaging visibly she is serving every day comparing with radha rani is she mother jasoda is so fortunate but still radha rani service is superior to mother jasoda and mother jashoda also in the, in the separation of lord krishna she is also crying day and night but still radha rani service is superior how we can understand what service radha rani perform as we discussed i'll try prabhu maybe prabhu you can answer that's better is to me one answer all services are superior in braj nobody is superior in krishna's eyes if somebody is dasya krishna see uh, among all dasya who is superior somebody in vasalya is superior for, i mean superiority is not from our side superiority comes from krishna side whom he see you know by by whose service he is pleased that is superior not that by our service lalita bi sakha were very expert but krishna was pleased by radha rani so they were pushing radha rani in front of krishna mm-hmm. so krishna is the one who is the parikshak who gives the mark who is superior so in his eyes dasya sakha vasalya madhurya everyone is superior and thus the body of the lord in braj they say oh, how fortunate you know one who dasya he said in sakya how fortunate he is that krishna likes him to climb on his you know shoulder 
And then one who is in Sakya, he said, Oh, how fortunate is that devotee who is serving, giving massage to Krishna, you know, who is in Dasya. So that's, that, that's, the, that's the beauty of Krishna consciousness. That's the beauty of whom Krishna has accepted. Those devotees are always Trinadha peaceful nature, they are humble. But Krishna has made them so proud, the others see him greater than him. That's the beauty. So there is no comparison between Radharani and Mother Jasoda. Radharani, Mother Jasoda is the greatest. She fed Krishna her breast. Can Radharani feed Krishna her, her breast? No. She fed Krishna her breast. So how great she is. And then Radharani say, and then Radhasuda says, how Radharani is so great that Krishna has become Lattu after her. Wherever he goes, he goes. So, I mean, this is the transcendental, you can say, glorification of devotees in Braj. Mm -hmm. Thank you. But you can and set some lights. It's, it's no, perfect no. and complete. <laughs> Nothing more to add. Because Krishna is Akhila Rasamrita Murti and he can uh, receive the love and affection and service of different devotees in different flavors in different moods. And he values every single service done by every single devotee in different, different moods. So they are of different categories of rasas. <laughs> we may not uh, consider one as superior, one as inferior, but everybody is serving. Thank you, thank you, Hare Krishna. I think it's getting late, we'll stop here. I need to go to GV now. <laughs> thank you very much, Granthraj. Huh? GV. <laughs> Hare Krishna. I'm going to the forest. <laughs> Granthraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai.